Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can take a look at the mental health and personality characteristics of preppers. Now, preppers are individuals who are preparing for the end of the world, the apocalypse. Sometimes they're called doomsday preppers, disaster preppers, or survivalists. So it's important to note here I'm not diagnosing anybody, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. So what are preppers preparing for? Well, we see a lot of different possibilities. They have concerns around both temporary and permanent changes to the environment. For example, many are worried about the collapse of financial markets, so they're worried we're going to return to a barter economy or a militaristic environment where the strongest get what they want. So really a breakdown of modern society. They call it the end of the world as we know it. And they have an acronym that takes the first letter of all those words and puts it together. They're also worried about a shortage of something critical, like water, fuel, food, like in the case of famine. They're worried about a shortage of power, medical services, and medicine. We also see natural disasters, like a flood, tornado, earthquake, drought, volcano, some sort of massive climate change. We see concerns about war, whether it's conventional or nuclear, the rise of a dictator, and the rise of lawlessness. We also see some concerns about pandemics, including zombies, like a zombie apocalypse. This one, I think, is really talked about a lot in the media, but in terms of people who identify themselves as preppers, I don't think this is really one of their major concerns. Now, we see that the idea of preparing for disaster has actually been around for a while. We see kind of a rise in popularity in the 50s, post-World War II. We also saw around the turn of the century the Y2K scare. So it's really nothing new, but it's more popular now than it ever has been. And I think the media plays a part in this, right, into this thinking. We see a lot of television shows and movies about a potential apocalypse or an apocalypse that's already occurred. For example, the television series The Walking Dead, which of course focuses more on zombies, but it also has a lot to do with adapting and adjusting to life during the apocalypse. And it also deals a lot with feelings, right? I find this interesting. The people on that show talk about their feelings a lot, considering the other really serious problems they have to think about. In terms of movies, we see a number of movies focused on different types of apocalyptic events, like I Am Legend and World War Z, kind of emphasizing adapting and restoring society back to where it was. We see other movies focused more on prevention, like Armageddon, which I thought was a pretty good movie. Deep Impact, which focused on prevention and acceptance, also I think a good film. The Day After Tomorrow, which is really about accepting and adapting. We see other interesting angles, like in the movie Oblivion, so really we see a deception here. And this will become important later on when I talk about the preppers and some of the different theories they have. But in Oblivion we saw deception and, of course, fighting back. In Zombieland, of course, this one really has to do with a zombie apocalypse, but I only really mention it because I like the movie. I think it's pretty funny. It doesn't really offer much value in terms of this discussion. We see movies like The Postman, which a lot of people did not like, but I really enjoyed that movie with Kevin Costner. It was about adapting, rebuilding, and fighting evil, so it had a lot of themes in it. We also see films like Mad Max. Now, there were four Mad Max movies. I only liked the first two, 1979 and 1981. 1981, of course, was The Road Warrior, one of my favorite movies. Here we saw kind of an emphasis on the shortage of fuel, but also just in general, survival and dealing with evil. So again, kind of a lot of similar themes throughout these movies. We see a lot of commonalities. In many of these movies, we see a strong, fearless, resourceful protagonist. On the other side, we see a population that's been taken by surprise, right? They're frantic, they're running over each other, they don't know what to do. And we also see sometimes a population who is evil, right? So people are divided into these categories, often in these types of movies. People who predicted the disaster are the smart ones, right? They were prepared, they're wise, they figured it out when no one else did, like the day after tomorrow. So what do preppers actually do? Well, we see that the preppers have a fairly large online community where they exchange knowledge, like locations of places that sell supplies, survival strategies, discussions of ethical dilemmas that they might face in a post-apocalyptic world. They also tend to stockpile material like water, fuel, food, medicine, firearms, ammunition, sometimes tools, and also sometimes vehicles, in particular four-wheel drive vehicles. 
In terms of philosophical and ideological components that we see associated with preppers, there's a lot of interesting discussion of this in the research literature. For example, the view of technology. A lot of people view technology as a means of improving the standard of living, but preppers tend to view technology as the end, right, as leading to the demise of civilization. In terms of self-sufficiency, a lot of people look at that as something that's for the greater good, but for the prepper, self-sufficiency is about individual survival. Preppers tend to be fatalistic, pessimistic, and have a great deal of fear. Now, of course, fear isn't always a bad thing, but we see a lot of fear with preppers. They tend to see signals of doom where they don't exist, right? So some things certainly could signal an apocalypse or a risk of one, but other things don't. But they tend to see a lot of things signaling the end of civilization. They're significantly more likely to believe in conspiracy theories, so they tend to distrust authority. A lot of the conspiracy theories are related to the government, like they distrust the federal government, the CDC, the FDA, and many of them tend to be against vaccinations. We see kind of a feeling of powerlessness, a need to gain power. I mentioned the online community before. It's a significant community in terms of size, but what's really interesting about that community is that research shows that preppers tend to distrust others in that community, right? They don't want to share information like their location or specifics about some of their plans with those other preppers. So they're not really advancing the formation of a community outside one that would be used for information exchange. Some preppers appear to look forward to an apocalypse. So some people think this is because of like the I'll show you mentality, like the preppers were getting ready for the end of the world and other people weren't. So if that happens, the preppers can say, well, look, you should have listened to me. I was right the whole time along. I don't think this is really what many of them think. I think for many, it's more of a sense of relief about when civilization ends, like they'll feel better when that happens, like life in general will be better. For example, I've seen this discussion in the research literature about how there'll be no more processed foods. So people will be thinner and healthier, right? So they're really kind of seeing an upside to the apocalypse that, of course, is clearly not there. Now we see that they do tend to rationalize some of the significant challenges to post-apocalyptic survival, right? For example, chronic health conditions. What's somebody do if they're diabetic and they need insulin? We see discussions in the research literature about how some preppers believe they can manufacture their own insulin, which of course would be nearly impossible unless you were a chemist and had a lab and access to a lot of different chemicals. What about chronic pain management? Some preppers believe that they'll be able to discontinue pain medication and that they'll be fine. Again, really not realistic. They tend to believe that medications don't really expire, at least not as quickly as physicians say or as Big Pharma says. So again, we see kind of the mistrust of organizations and people. I've seen the same thing with gasoline. We know that gasoline expires after one year if it's stabilized. It expires sooner than that if it's not. But some preppers believe that that's just propaganda that's spread by the government. I don't really see many exceptions to this with the gasoline expiration. Maybe if the gasoline was stored in an airtight container that was made out of steel, but even then it might last no more than two years, right? So this one maybe is a distrust of big oil, like so there's big farm and there's big oil. Maybe that's what they're thinking. I've seen some references too to The Walking Dead, that television series I talked about before, where they have gone more than a few years and they're still using gasoline even though they haven't made any new gasoline. But again, that's just a TV show. Of course, in real life, the fuel would have gone stale a while ago. They also talk about places to raid to get medicine, fuel, and supplies. I doubt that it would be safe to do that, and I think other people would also think of these things, right? It's not just preppers that would know where different things are stored. They don't seem to be too worried about breaking the law in a post-apocalyptic society, so really they're focusing on here a complete collapse as opposed to a temporary interruption in services. In terms of personality profile, like the five-factor model, the big five profile, well, in terms of openness to experience, I've seen it range all over from low openness to experience to the middle all the way to high. For conscientiousness, they tend to be highly conscientious, so organized. We see low extroversion, typically, so introversion, mid to low agreeableness, and some would say high neuroticism, so a lot of anxiety and worry. And I agree with that, but I've also seen people who are preppers who are kind of in the mid-range for neuroticism. 
So again, this is just a tendency with the personality profiles. Any one particular person could have a much different personality profile than that. Now, some believe that preppers have underlying mental illness, especially when we're talking about extreme preppers, not people who make some preparations for adverse events, but those who make preparing a lifestyle and who tend to also believe in a number of conspiracy theories. So the theory here is that mental illness leads to the preparing behavior. So there's a few possibilities when we talk about the mental health characteristics of preppers. I think one is kind of the slow-moving trauma theory. So watching the news, looking at these television shows, looking at the movies like the ones I've talked about, it makes sense that people might be afraid. So living in anticipation of a catastrophe can be traumatic. So this slow-moving trauma can lead to something like maybe post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, a lot of times I'm asked about OCD, OCPD, and hoarding disorder. So these are kind of common mental illnesses that people associate with over-preparing behavior. Now, with OCD, we really see OCD manifest in several ways, but two important ways would be with insight, so people that know that the obsessions and the compulsions are not rational, and those without insight often severe manifestations of OCD, and both lead to clinically significant distress. But many preppers tend to function well across many domains. They go to work, they maintain relationships, they don't appear to have clinically significant distress. Some do seem to have obsessions and compulsions, of course, specifically around survival after an apocalypse, but again, most don't. So OCD might be there with some preppers. Now with OCPD, with obsessive-compulsive personality disorder, which is a different disorder. We see someone here who is perfectionistic. They follow the rules. They're a rigid thinker. They're frustrated by people who are not well organized, and they don't discard items, even if those items are worthless. So this could be the case for some. OCPD lines up somewhat. It might be that they can't accept things outside of their control. And again, that would be the part where we really overlap there with OCPD. The last one here for this group that I talked about was hoarding disorder. So OCD, OCPD, and hoarding disorder. People with this disorder are disorganized, and they get pleasure from acquiring things. So they accumulate worthless objects because it distresses them to discard those objects. And it might be because those objects have utility, some sort of aesthetic value, they have some sort of strong sentimental attachment to those objects, or they don't want to be wasteful, so they feel guilty about throwing things away. Now, when comparing hoarding disorder to preppers, we see that preppers are stockpiling, so they're accumulating something for a purpose. It's somewhere between hoarding, which is disorganized, and collecting, which is organized, and of course not associated normally with mental disorder. So there are some similarities between people with hoarding disorder and preppers. Hoarding disorder, like OCD, is associated with clinically significant distress. So again, most preppers don't seem to have clinically significant distress. With hoarding disorder, we see a number of characteristics like perfectionism, avoidance, being disorganized, procrastinating, being highly distractible and decisive. So some overlap with those CPD, but then some other areas that are really quite different. Now with preppers, we do see some perfectionism, maybe, but the other characteristics here of hoarding disorder, we really don't see as much. So what about disorders like schizophrenia? I see this one brought up quite a bit when talking about preppers especially the components of schizophrenia like the psychosis, the delusions and hallucinations. And really, it kind of centers on the persecutory delusions. So the government is out to get them, the government can't be trusted. I think for some, this is the case. Certainly some schizophrenia would be present in part of that population. But again, schizophrenia is associated with clinically significant distress, so we run to that same situation. Now, less severe manifestation of some of the symptoms we see with schizophrenia would be something like schizotypal personality disorder. So it's also a mental disorder, but again, it's not considered as severe as schizophrenia. It doesn't really have psychosis. Instead, it has odd thinking and unusual beliefs. So this is a possibility for some as well. Now, schizotypal is a cluster A personality disorder, and another cluster A personality disorder is paranoid personality disorder. And I think for some, this could make sense, right? It really aligns with the distrust of the government and the belief in conspiracy theories without involving any type of psychotic behavior, like, again, delusions or hallucinations. So what about depression and anxiety? We see these are brought up sometimes when talking about preppers. I think in terms of depression, preparing for the apocalypse could be a way of coping with depression. 
That's a possibility. But I think the best explanation for a lot of this behavior would be anxiety and fear. Individuals are anxious about the world ending. So maybe they don't have anxiety at a level where it's a mental illness, although in some cases, of course, it would be. But it still causes disturbances, right? It still causes pain and suffering. The preparing alleviates some of the worry. Staying busy makes somebody feel in control. Again, gaining power. Remember, we have this feeling of powerlessness associated with preppers. And this feeling can be a strong motivator to take action. Some preppers may have a mental illness. Some would not. It's an understudied population, so we don't really know a lot about them. This population tends not to seek mental health counseling services, which kind of makes sense given their interest and belief in conspiracy theories. A lot of individuals who believe in conspiracy theories don't seek mental health counseling services. So again, we don't have a lot of research on this population, and we need to learn more about them to understand what's going on. So I know whenever I talk about topics like the mental health and personality characteristics of preppers, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate a really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this discussion of preppers to be interesting. Thanks for watching.